G Money. Yo. So we got a legend in the building. That's a fact. He tried to G check us behind the scenes. <laughs> Tell us what we could talk about, but we can't. Obviously, it'll be slick. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of respect. He had this man bone out here looking at niggas, grilling niggas, you know, showing, the, you know, you know listen at the third. I ain't like that. I ain't gonna lie, but I respect the bones. I respect his handle, but I ain't like that. What's good, man? What's up? G Money. Yo. Episode motherfucking 32. Nigga, we made it. it. Now you want, now you want point. How you doing, G? Good, man. Yeah, we just had, we just had a legendary yeah. episode prior. Facts. Now we got a legend, man, in the building, man. Let's get straight into it, man. What's that? Man? My man Chaz. What's mm. good? What's good? They call you Chaz. You know, Chaz. Is it Chaz they call Williams? Me, they call me Chaz Williams, and they call me something else that we, we ain't going to talk about. Oh, oh, I know what they call you. I know, I, 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 yeah, we, we ain't going to talk about it right now. Let, let's, try, let's try to get it. Let's try to slip it in. Um... <laughs> What's up, Chaz? You from Southside Jamaica, Queens? You from Queens? Southside, yeah, Jamaica, Queens. How you feeling, yeah. man? How you mm. feeling today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm how you good. feel? How you feel to be gonna flip the script? I, I really, I, I know you ain't do your research on us and how how crazy nah, we get. Nah, yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I'm, you just, you know, I'm but you know, here, man. we don't get to it. You know, I like <laughs> to do stuff just you know naturally, organically. You oh, know okay. What I mean? Okay. So I don't, you know, too organic. No, it's because I do. I do have some guidelines before I get to. My yeah, organism is in within a perimeter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I think that's unfair. Me personally, I think that's unfair because <laughs> you, 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 when you preach and, you, and you're talking about something, it's positivity, and um, you know, and then now you just somebody here for you. No. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, they got. Yo, come on, yo, talk, talk, yo, what's up with them, man? Like, you know, huh? Like, nah. Uh. Yeah, man. Sorry, Chad, <laughs> for that. But anyway, how, 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 how you feeling today, my man? No, I'm good, bro. You know, nice day out. You know, nice day. today was a nice day anyway. Yeah, today was a nice day, so I was feeling good. You know, okay. I feel good every day. I wake up and move around. You know. So you want to talk, you you want to just you want to spoon feed us bullshit. <laughs> I'm happy you're alive. You look good. You know what I'm saying? You you, you look good. What what? What is your name? What's your name? Your first name? Is it Chaz? You was oh, no. You, you talking about my government name? Yeah, yeah. Fact, oh, I, I, oh, I, oh, oh, Charles. Charles. Yeah. Where Chaz came from? I haven't called Chaz so long since I was a fucking kid in 40 Projects. Ah, 40P. Yeah. Shout out to 40P. Yeah, grew up in 40. Grew up in 40. Born in Harlem. Born in Harlem. Then moved to 40. So you was a Harlem nigga? Wasn't a Harlem nigga. I was born in Harlem Hospital and Harlem Hospital giving beds out. You keep saying, yeah, I was Lord born you. in Harlem Hospital. We <laughs> were living in Harlem. When Follow I was, a, I, was a, I don't know. I was a little dude. I, I don't know. Maybe say eleven, six or seven. You or about to say eleven, Chaz? You a Harlem? Might have been. It might have been. So you a Harlem nigga on the low? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, was, I think I was younger than that, man. Okay, all right, Queens nigga. Uh, yeah, I'm the Queens nigga because I we moved to moved to forty. I was staying on 109th Avenue and 159th Street. Then we moved to the mm. building. Me, then wall. Like I was on the third floor, and the Callies was on the first floor. So, mm. so what was was 40 Wild back in the days? Was it called 40 Projects? It was yeah, of course, definitely called 40 Projects. Why they call it 40? I, I don't understand the history, man. Me either. I just call, oh, as long as I was well, there, they well, called well, it 40 well, Projects. They always called it 40. Always called it 40. And yeah. it was it was wild back then. It was, you know, they had some other proper name at the town, I think Huntington, some shit like that. But, but it, was it was always called 40. 40, yeah. Because the Jamaica school, houses. PS40, PS40 is 40, the school. Yeah. It's right across the street. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, I ain't going to get into it now, but, you know, you G-checked us earlier. <laughs> you know, you told us what we could talk about, but I'm gonna slip it in. Just you know, pause. Yeah, hey, he's an old school nigga. That's fine. But bring us your story. What? what I, let me tell you what I know about you. Mm-hmm. I know niggas talk about your records. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, a few people, nah, some other few yeah. people talk. About I know. I, I know. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> you start? Did you start Black Hand? Black Hand is your yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, Black Hand's me. Owner Black Hand, and I know you was robbing banks. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's go into the childhood, man. Like, like, the, tell us about your childhood. Uh, now, did you live with both your parents in forty? I lived with both my parents in forty. Yeah, I did. Yeah, like I said, we moved from um, uh, Harlem to Queens. Mm-hmm. Uh, both my parents, a uh, brother and a sister, mm-hmm. and uh, we stayed like. Was on one hundred and nine, uh, 
in 159th Street, seven story building, first on the first floor. Mm-hmm. Then we moved to 10708, 160 Street mm-hmm. on the third floor. Mm-hmm. You know, Wall was on the, his family was on the college, was on the first floor. Who's Wall? Who's that? Uh, you, you don't know Wall? Oh. I'm from Yeah. Coley. Coley. Kilo, yeah. the whole, the whole. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Call, 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 no, 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 no. We, I, like, you know, I just hood, le- hood, hood legends. Yeah, they, yeah, definitely, definitely. Wall is all right. Like, so, yeah. so, so, mm-hmm. so, all right. So, you telling all these people now? You lived with both your parents, yeah. brother and sister, in forty. Mm-hmm. You was on the third floor. Yeah. All right. Can you get into what your parents did? Uh, yeah. My, my, actually, my father started working at. Uh, well, what they know is. It's, JFK now Kennedy before that air, airport. He, was was yeah. he an engineer? Was he, no, he was a. Uh, he had worked with to be what they call lead ramp serviceman. Like mm. you know that that he, he was supervised them when they come on the planes and got the planes you, got ready you, got all you. that shit. And what Mama loved it. Nothing. She's housewife. Housewife. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Took care of y'all. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You so, know? what mm-hmm. schools you went to? Well, <laughs> that's funny. I went to. Uh, uh, one one uh one fifty five PS one fifty five. What the hell is that? It, well, at the um, time, it's like right back of uh, Sufton Boulevard, you know. But that, I don't know what Rock, they might call Sufton it and Rockaway? now. No, I, well, I went to on, on Sufton and Rockaway. I went to later after I got kicked out of public school. I ended up in a Catholic school, St. Clements. Which was over there by Rockaway. So Boulevard. all these schools are closed down. Then I got uh, kicked out of St. Clement. Because these are in the forties or fifties. I went to junior high school eight. <laughs> I <laughs> said. Wait, wait, talk yeah. about, uh, like, what, what year was this? Because I, I never heard these names. Fifty five and man, one fifty five. Keep it real. I, I can't. Forties. Ain't no forties. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you was robbing banks in the sixties. Yeah, but I was young. I was young. I started young. You know what I mean? What? I started. Not 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 with fifteen. So I, yeah, probably about fourteen. Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. okay, I got it. So all right, so the fifties you was in these. Schools. I was yeah. I all was, right, so all right, so let's fifties in the sixties. You know what I mean? Like got it in that area. Okay, yeah. so you, most right. of the sixties. What high you know? school you went to? I went well. I went to Jamaica High for a minute. Was it the same? The same area was it? Is it? Yeah. Okay. So Jamaica High was the same area, and then. Uh, my my parents moved out of the projects and moved over to St. Albans side. Oh, I really like the Cambridge North Heights side. side, North side. Yeah. And so at that point, I went to Jackson for a minute. Mm-hmm. Cause Jackson was really actually right across the street from where I, where, where my my parents' house was. Mm. Yeah. So I went, to, you know, but I didn't go in there long. I was, you know, hookied you, out. You know? wilding. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, was, so, how, you know, before the the shit, you know, you know, niggas talk about, how did it start for you, man? Robbing banks and shit. Like, what, what, you know, I mean, I know you tell a story all the time, nigga, but we. Oh, we, well, we, I'm we, saying, like, you know, juice. I was, you know, I was always a little ahead of my time anyway, you know. Oh, and, you and go. I was, I was, oh, I was oh, always hanging oh, out with oh, older, older guys, oh, man. Oh, all right. You know what I'm saying? So, dude. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was always hanging out with older guys, and I had, um, uh, you know, started early in, in, in you know, in serious crime. And, wait, and actually, wait. I was see, also, I went to school in Tampa, Florida, too, you know, because I got kicked out of the schools in New York at one point, and they mm. sent me down there. I was always, I was, you know. So, was, where the crime started? In Tampa? No, I started in New York. But what I'm asking you, you trying to make, don't, 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 don't improvise for us. We don't <laughs> do that here. Because it's a, it's a story it's mad long. So you, you, then you, 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 you try to say your memory fucked up? You just told me some no, ill memory. All right, no, so don't, I'm not saying it's don't fucked jump, up. Don't jump the gun because no, I, I, I pull out the hammer. I pull out the hammer. I pull out the cannon. All right, so let's let's keep it real. So No, I'm saying. So then, like. But who influenced you? you can't, a nigga that could just wake up. I, was, it, was it how you was living? Because you said your parents bought a house from Jackson. Yeah, my, like I said, this so like when people think that I think sometimes people think that you know it, you got to be living in some kind of way in poverty or a single parent yeah. to be a street motherfucker. I'm street all the way, and I had both parents in the house. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I and mean, and mm-hmm. bec- I mean, generally, you know, but they still couldn't afford some of the things that you know you still want in, in, in on the street. And and I came up in a different time too. Where you know the racist level level was super high, you know, and and you know the segregation was legal and super bad, you know what I mean? Especially mm. when I went 
when I went down south, you know. So, you know, when again, when I was going down south, in, in, in fact, my parents are all from the south, so we basically would go there anyway to visit their family, you know, their, you know, my grandparents. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, I experienced a lot of, you know, really, you know, bad racial incidents, which also with, with the police too, which kind of, you know, molded how I felt about so government you just go just, and you just, police and white folks. All right, so what know? did you go through, man? I never heard you talk about it. Like, you got to well, give us something. What I mean, you Cut know, all like. Cut this shit out, Chad. No, I'm, I'm saying, but, you know, we used to drive down south, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, we used to drive, some, you know, like. Give us something that comes to your mind that you remember that, that fucked you up. No, yeah. like, I'm just saying, you, you know, like, as a kid, you know, when you get, you know, if they would stop us. The police would stop us and talk crazy to my father. Like, my father, for me, you know, was like my father was also in the Army. He served in the Army. Wow. You know, so in my mind, you know, he could he could go and, um, you know, fight and die in another land, you know, uh, equally. But come back to America, he couldn't live equally. You know what I mean? So that had a real impact on how I perceived things and started perceiving the government and perceiving, you know, just the 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 society, you know. And that caused me to react certain ways, you know, and I I felt that So you, you witnessed somebody talk to your father crazy, right? Yeah. White yeah, cops. Yeah. They, did when they, they put stop, hands they on talk, him? No, nah, they didn't put hands on, but they talk crazy. Then I was like I would ask questions in my phone. We used to sleep in the car. You know, because we couldn't get no sleep in the hotel. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, at that time, you in the South, you would see the big old signs, white only. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, uh-huh. he, it, Negroes and all this shit, crazy shit. You know what I mean? So in your mind, then you don't you like I can't fuck with them. I don't like no, like crackers. man. Listen, yeah, that that's that's um yeah, basically, you know, and you know, and then it was starting. You know, like the the conscious movement started to rise somewhere after that. You know the Muslim, you know black Muslims, you know uh, FOI, you know uh, uh, Farrakhan was doing a lot of talking, oh, Malcolm yeah. X, you know, and all that stuff was but going on. So you on. ain't believing you you, you you wasn't that wasn't your wave. No, my, no, my actually my 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 cousin is Tupac's stepfather. You know, Matula Secure. That's like, oh, yeah, G- Gerald. You know, Gerald Williams is his real name. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, he took. I mean, that was his name when we was kids. He changed his name, mm-hmm. and um, you know, he was in the Panthers at first. You know, so he was always trying to recruit me. Though I wasn't trying to hear that shit. So what? So, <laughs> so what made you? I wanna, was on some street shit. You know? What made? So what was your first street <laughs> incident? You remember? Uh, you know, like, whew, I mean, you know, we did all kind of little shit first. I'm talking like, you know, the bike steal. You know, I was a little kid. We steal bikes and some more shit too. You know, all the regular shit, you know, steal candy, all the regular shit as a kid. <laughs> and then it got to be a little more serious. And, you know what I mean? We, you know, and it started going about 12. I think I was in an armed robbery of a drugstore or something like that. You yeah. was with somebody? Yeah, yeah, older guys. I tell you, I used to hang with the older guys. Plus, I wasn't a little guy. I'm tall for my age, you, are, you know, so. Still, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, you know, I, I you know, I fit in with that, you know. And um, I ended up in Spotford, you know, the youth house up in the Bronx and shit, so. Mm-hmm. How long you was in there for? <sighs> shit, uh, I was in there a few times, so, you know, a few months at a time. You know, initially, they don't. Send you up there. At 12 years old was the first time you went up there? Yeah, 12 when I was first went in. Your yeah. parents was all broken? Pretty sure. Yeah, because, you know, they you know they, they were, wasn't into no street shit like that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they was, you know, they figured they'd give me everything or whatever, you know, you know, what they could, you know. But, I, you know, I had my mind held bent on some other shit, you know what I mean? Which I said, like I said, I, I just wasn't feeling... You know, now, I mean, I, I understood it more as I got older. I just wasn't feeling, this, you know, the society. And I believed that I was going to get my piece of the apple pie, you know, by any means necessary. You know, I was on it like that. Did, did, did you, do you, do you regret anything as far as hurting your parents? Anything. No, no. I mean, I, I do I take that back. I, I don't, I don't regret anything for me as far as like the incarcerations and all that. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I yeah, handle that. Yeah, you're a street that. nigga, yeah, of course. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I don't regret it. You know, I don't, you know what happened. I did what well, I, I did. Your parents. I, but I do. Yeah, I, you know. And when I think back, you know, I got kids, and I I know how that would feel. You know, if they were into something like that. So in retrospect, you mm -hmm. know, I think about damn. I was taking my parents through some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? You Have know? you ever sat down with your parents like years later <coughs> after, after that happened? You know, and and, and kind of. Apologize to them, or just I, I didn't. No, I didn't get the chance to. I mean, you know, like we all know that life is but so long for anybody, right? But you know, you don't look to it, you know. So I never did discuss it. I think you know how I treated them; they understood, you know, that basically without me saying it, mm -hmm. that you know, I I didn't. And they never, they always stuck with me. I don't care where I was at in the country. You know, I've been in penitentiaries and jails all over the country and out of out of country. Mm. And no matter where I was at, you know, they they found a way to get to me. You know, I like that. Yeah. So you like so, yeah, yeah. Sorry, You never felt like you know after getting like locked up or going to spa for it, coming back home, and that they, they still they still showing you love and holding you down. You never felt like damn, I gotta I gotta, I gotta stop, man, because. I'm doing, never, doing too much, and my parents are still here for me, but, you know. I never felt that, and, you know, although at a certain point in my mind, I think they start beginning to just understand <coughs> my life, <coughs> the lifestyle I was living, not to understand the street shit about it. Mm -hmm. But, the when you know, the FBI, you know, they took them, you know, like they, because I think of the, they went through the same shit in the South <clears throat> that they um, began to understand, you know, uh, when the FBI come to the house looking for me or, uh, you know, the marshals or whatever, you know, they was pretty much used to, what you know, right, right. how to handle it, you know. So I thought that at a certain point, I think they just accepted what I was, what what I decided to do with my life, you know, and just said, you know, you know, they wouldn't do anything wrong or accept anything wrong from me, you know, but or aid me in anything crazy, you know, or like that. But and I wouldn't ask them to, you know. But I think that they, as I, as I look at it in retrospect, they began to just accept it, and I think that, you know, let them live on. Like my brothers and my sister, they were career service people. Mm. Yeah, the, my sister was a colonel in the army. Ended up being a colonel in the army, and she served for thirty six years in the army. You know, what so I mean? my brother thing, was the same way. He's a, he was in the air force. So mm. you went that Retired. you went the street route, I, yeah, I, because I, of what was going on in society at that moment. You felt that black people were being treated unfairly, and you just wanted to take back. Yeah, I felt that that we wasn't gonna get a fair shot at shit, and, you so know, because I it. saw we wasn't getting a fair shot. I, like I, I, I lived the segregation because, like I said, I went to school in Florida and Tampa, and I lived it. And I was told, "Don't go over them tracks over there. You know, if you go over them tracks, you ain't coming back." You know what I mean? Wow. So I, I, you know, and I saw the police how they would act toward black people. You know what I mean? So I kind of, I lived that shit, so it was a little different for me, you know? And and my brothers and I didn't, I don't say they was separated from it, but I was sit down there to, you know, to live, not them. So, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm sure they experienced whatever they experienced. What, what, I mean, know? what age you was sent down there? Shit, I, I, I think it was 13, 14, you know, 14. After Spotify. I was sent a couple. After yeah, Spotify. Yeah, 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 after Spotify. I mean, but all the time I was going there, you know, to see the grandparents, you know, every year. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, you know, we was going down every year. So I, every year I can remember, shoot, that we went down there for some damn holiday. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they was choking chickens and all this little crazy, you know. I couldn't eat them chickens. So I, <laughs> <laughs> they would bring the chicken head off and the chicken be running around the yard. And then they, that night they had that shit on the table. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? chicken out though. Yeah, I eat chicken now, but I couldn't eat that chicken after seeing the chicken the same chick. run around the yard. You know what I mean? I got it. So, <laughs> question, so, all right, so bring me to the day you first committed your first bank robbery. 
What was in your mind? I need to be that day. I don't want to hear oh, it. Oh, you don't remember. Nigga, everybody remember their first craziness. The first bang around me. The first time you did. I could. All right. I did so many of them things. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, How much you did? How many bank robbers you did in all? Well, they say, <laughs> they say about 60, you know, in Jeez. their calculation. You know I, I mean? I, all right, allegedly you did more. No, no, no. I'm just saying that's what they calculated. Allegedly you, know? you did less? I didn't keep count. I don't know. They was counting. I don't know what you know. what I'm saying. I'm saying so I didn't keep count. I just why you front on me for though. I, I respect I'm, you. I'm, I'm telling you though. Like why? Why? I'm giving you, you the truth. Give, you, give, I didn't. You don't you keep us track. We can't talk about. We, we no. Buy, like, you can't. Over. You don't keep track of that shit. You just count the money. <laughs> so mm, bring, that's, <laughs> yeah. a that's a fire. Bring line. it to your first bank robbery. Damn man, you know I wasn't I was a novice and shit with that. You know I wasn't. How old were you in your first? You have to know. Come on. How how American gangster first time. Yeah, well, yeah, I probably was fourteen. You know that, that I, that I believe I was probably fourteen. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I think it was. All right, and then fourteen, fifteen, it's like, yeah. And then, and then, shit. It was you and the team. It had to be. You can't. Yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out like. Let him think. Let him think. You know, he, he getting a little older, so he got. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that shit was a lot of years ago. Yeah. You know? So and, it's, and it's you and the team. You guys had a, a meeting prior to this, probably. You got to discuss. Oh <laughs> well, no, we was a little like as I got older, we got more sophisticated with it. You know, the first. I want to know about the reckless nigga shit. The first ones wasn't is you know once you once I went in. You know, you learn stuff as you go into the prisons, you know, to become more sophisticated in what you do. Because you learn from your mistakes and the mistakes of others in there. And some of the others in there that are older, you know, they have other things they give you that you utilize once you get Do you remember out. the first bank you robbed? No, I don't remember. You don't remember the name of it? Was no, it Queens? no. Shit, I don't know where it was. I don't, I don't remember. Well, the what's first the mo- one. Ah, you don't remember the first one. Mm-hmm. All right, which ones you remember? Oh shit, I remember a lot of shit out of Michigan. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I remember those instances. Oh, those. Okay, got I it. I remember shit in New York, but I don't. Did remember you hit the years. shit on Linda, on Linda the Farmers? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Linda the Farmers. Man, we would like just one of the things that that I wouldn't do, is, and it was it that we would not. Mm-hmm. You know, early on before, yeah, you know, we was queen, you know, the, some queen shit. But as we got older, then you don't shit where you live at. Right. We, we didn't do shit like local, you know. Take us to a, a, a day you remember, though, like a, one of your bank robbing days where you guys, like, give us like the outline. You guys drove up to the spot. Oh. You guys are, ah, you know, you Yeah, I mean, the, we, the generally, when we got really, you know, sophisticated, is. And, and and that was the majority of the bank robbers. We would we would consider take take you know takeover bank robbers. You know we ain't no fucking no passes, none of that shit, right? So what's takeover? Run the takeover mean, on the ground. Takeover mean you take over the bank. You take control of the bank. You take control of the floor. You take control of the teller counters, and you take that motherfucking manager in that vault. How many of y'all was in there that ran in there? It'd be three to four, depending on how big the bank is. One time we had five. Who was the leader of it? They, 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 they said I was the ringleader. I mean, oh, basically. Was, <laughs> oh, you ain't snitching. I was, you ain't snitching. I was convicted call, for you, being the ringleader. You, you ain't calling nobody else's name. I was convicted for being the ringleader. You know, but were you yeah. the leader, though? I was I was convicted for being the ringleader. Actually, leader. was you the leader yourself? You would tell me if you wasn't. Everybody's a leader. That's what oh. I'm <laughs> everybody, everybody is equal. All right. But so, you had the plan, though. Everybody you, gets equal money. You had the plan, though. Yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah, because I you I, had the smarts. I'm gonna ask I you mean, this question. This might be kind of reckless. Were you busting them things and? Oh yeah, yeah. We they, but they know that because they, you know, <laughs> they yeah. We had we had. I was convicted for attempted murder on two police. So you know they already. Know. I mean, we ain't gonna get to that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna hear about that. You no. you can't talk about that. No, I can talk about. It. I was I'm saying, you don't want to talk about shit. That you don't want to talk about done. this. I, I, have to, I, I have to get at you. I have to get at you. I love you. Those, those, yeah, those. I'm just some, saying you had to like, I was you convicted for like that. Mary Poppins. You don't want to tell us nothing. <laughs> I think you just slide it. I was, I was convicted <laughs> for. I was convicted for the for that. So okay, so I mean? the first. So and what? I was convicted for a bunch of bank robbers, string of bank robbers. So yeah, so, I can talk so about you, all that. So tell us a, a takeover bank. You go in. What's the first thing? I want you to take walk us through. It's okay, the takeover. Nah, nah, nah. I want you to walk us through. We did. We we gonna rob the bank with you. Tell us what to do. 
Point See, of the I don't want to. I don't want to go out there and try nothing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chaz. Come on, please. They gonna be like Chaz. Chaz told me. Yeah, yeah. You Chaz know they say me. they blame it on the music, right? Uh, <laughs> Chaz, please, that's not the music. <laughs> Come on, Chaz. You gotta tell us something. All right, so, man. All right, so, so put the put the disclaimer out there. Disclaimer for everybody listening. All right, yeah, yeah. Don't like, try this don't, at home. Yeah. Please don't, don't try this at home. Please don't try this at we home. We don't. We don't condone this. Yeah, yeah we don't condone this. Yeah, sure. Ice T said the best. The best time to ride a bank. Best time to rob the bankers in the morning. He got it. He's on to something. Yep. Hmm. All yeah. right, so we all about to rob a bank with you. We Yeah, we Let's come, in, we come who in do, first who thing do what? in the morning. Take us Based take us on personality, who do what? He the quiet okay, widow. Okay, let, 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 let me give you, 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 you some of the... I'm gonna give you some of the stuff. You front, I'm, I'm I can't fine. give you all of it. Then. Come on, Chad, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna give you some of the stuff. If you do that, I'm, I'm, I'm opening gates. <laughs> no, I'm, please, gonna say, I'm saying like I'm gonna give you because I got you know I just gotta be cautious. So, <laughs> uh, when they start scratching the back of his head, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so first thing is that it's the target. You all know, right. you gotta find your target. You know, what I'm right. saying so the target, target bank. Got it. So you find the target bank, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got to find your getaway route, mm. right? right, right. Okay. You find yeah. the target bank and your getaway route, you know? Do you do you choose different routes just in case this don't work, this work, or you just go one nah, route? You, you no, you just, you, you kind of know the area. You got the general route, and you know the area how to get to the, because the getaway route, it ain't, it's, 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 two, it's, two, it's a two-phase route. Mm. In other words, you're in a stolen car. Mm-hmm. When you drive up to the bank, and and we intentionally drive it where they can see it, you know, some kind of way, you know what I mean? Because we're not driving very too far with that car before we switch out of that car into good cars. Got it. All right. So now, right. All right, so so now, bring us to the bring us to the, and usually, how to rob. Usually, how to in rob. The, this is the well, the getaway is the most important. Part. The robbery is always easy. You know what I'm saying? The getaway is the, the most important part of the robbery. You know, the money taken, you're going to get that. They're going to cooperate. They're told to cooperate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the most important part. How do you get out of there? And um, once you get to the get, so the getaway cars, it's usually, if it's three, three or four of us, it's usually three cars, good cars. So when we drive, to do the switch into the good cars, they're gonna be looking for a red vehicle with three guys. They don't know if we black or white. Ah. Because we, we're fully masked and fully gloved. So how I mean? can't, they can't, your eyes? We're fully masked, fully gloved. We, 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 then, we go at goggles over the, what you call it, put the hoods up. And have they didn't have that on. technology back in the days. Goggles, uh, not, yeah, that ain't technology. <laughs> that's just regular goggles and a hood. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and and or you know we have a jumpsuit on because once we come out of there we got shirt and ties on. Mm. You know what I mean? That's so what easy. did what would you what did you do when you ran in there? Me? Yeah, I want to know uh, m- what I did. I was I was usually the, the guy that took the manager into the safe. What did you say? Mm. What did you say? You taking me to? The, I'm the manager. What did you say? Well, well, the, the, the first me. thing, the first you, thing, are, I you, say, are, you, are you are you putting your hands on me or not? Sometimes, oh. sometimes <laughs> you got to, you know, sometimes. So sometimes, yeah. But see, what happens is usually when you go and you say and you don't ask who the manager is because we already know that and you and we we we, we may even know his name because we in case the bank and we know who the manager is and we know his name. And we'd be able to say, so-and-so, let's go. You know what I mean? He'd be like, I mean, we'll know, you know, take him into the vault. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's all in your casing, casing the spot. And, again, so the getaway route, right? That's the first, mm-hmm. your first thing. So now mm-hmm. you got your getaway route. So the second thing we do is the morning, you know, what we, what we try to do, what we really do, we like say if it's a supermarket near the area or some some kind of other commercial place mm-hmm. near the area, we'll do a call like a robbery of the spot. So cool we'll do a it. we'll do a call, you know, like a false robbery report and try to time the, the, how long it takes the police to get there. Mm. You know what I mean? So we kind of get an idea because mostly. They ride their little routes. You know, sometimes they could be off route because they might get a call somewhere. But 
you know, we just try to get the the time when they when they when they when they call that it's a robbery call. We want to see what their response is to that. How many police cars in case we get a confrontation? You know what I'm saying? We want to know what the fuck we gonna be up against. You know how they coming? You know what I'm saying? You know, so we do that too, and then that at you know again and then at night, like the drive-in part of the bank. Cause we usually do those kind of banks, you know, those are the better ones. Cause at night you can go and look, and you can look and see all the drawers in the back. But they got the, they got the little saves in the back of the, mm-hmm. you know, the counters and all that. When you look through the driving window, mm-hmm. so we already kind of know where everything is at, you know, mm-hmm. before we get in there in the morning. Yeah, and the other thing that we do, I hate to give away this secret, man, cause somebody might think about it. <laughs> and try that shit. Let's go, let's well, go. All right. Cool. Oh, man. The other thing is that we also would, like, we, we, we know that, so, like, we try to get, like, a, a area where they doing, like, an industrial area where they doing, like, paychecks, you know, where they come in and cash their checks at, right? So mm-hmm. say they cash their checks on a Friday. Mm-hmm. We know, and we'll check it for a few weeks, that, the armored car will come either that Wednesday or that Thursday, you know? So we clock that. And usually the armored car come the same time every week. Right. You know what I mean? And and we, you know, and we, and once they drop, depending on the timing, mm-hmm. that they drop, that money is usually somewhere close by in that safe sitting in that bag because they didn't count it or check it yet. Mm-hmm. Get that bag. You know, so, it, so yeah, so the bag is easy. You know what I mean? You, 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 you kind of, if you get that manager in there and you talk to him and you say, yeah, where that bag at that he dropped yesterday? He'd be like, oh, shit, they know. <laughs> <laughs> Secure the bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's just, a, you know, that's just some, some of the stuff that we would, as like I said, as we got older, mm-hmm. we got, Really sophisticated with it. So you was 14, 15 doing this? No, no. That, I mean, you know, like, it wasn't that, you know, like I, like I said, we grew into the sophistication. Right, right. It, it was a, you know, we was a little not, you know, we was doing first just counter, you know, take, jumping over the counters and all that, you know. Right, then right, right. as we got older. Everybody on the ground, that shit. Well, we always did that part. Yeah, the floor man. We had the floor man. He goes in first. Yeah, that's how many that. banks you, you got robbed before you got caught? I I don't know the number, but you only get you know. See, the thing is, when you even doing anything, you know, every day you gotta be lucky. They only gotta be lucky one day, mm-hmm. and when that one day comes, they caught you during the robbery. No, they never caught us doing. No, they ain't never caught us doing the robbery. Mm-hmm. They have no nah, video. They never caught us. Yeah, they always have us on video. But they didn't know who. They All right, so, know, so tell me, can't know what it is. Can you name your team? Who's your team? Or you can't no, name it. I can't. No, no. Really? Well, a lot of them is convicted, but some of them are dead now. Anyway, but oh, you don't want to name them. Names. Nah, nah, they don't. They don't need it. You know, nah. they don't fuck with them anymore. Mm, some, yeah, cause some of them are still locked up for other shit, though. You know, and you don't want to. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to <coughs> name anybody. I mean, but my, a lot of them was convicted too. That, so I mean, it wouldn't hurt them anyway. And I mean, you just don't want, okay, I, yeah, you, you, yeah, you're just a difficult guy to talk to. I, I nah, I'm saying, <laughs> you know, what I mean, but like I said, you know, the, the initial robbery was just like you know us jumping the counter. But what we never do and we never did was like give the give the tellers the bag, all that crazy shit, because you're gonna get you an ink pack doing that, you know. So we never did that kind. So we go ourselves over the counter and take the money, you know what I mean? But as we got more sophisticated, we, we you know, it became a little. You ever got an ink bag before? Somebody got an ink pack that, you know, because I don't even know what he was thinking about, but somebody got an ink pack. It wasn't in this state either. We was in, maybe I can say that, we was in Michigan. What's the uh, ink pack for PBS? Oh, the ink pack is, you know, the, 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 the exploding money, like it'd be. In the middle of the money? Yeah, they they put it like the other thing we do is like when when we go behind the counter, we try to go for the reserve drawers. That's the drawers that usually have the you know the stacks. So like the other the other part of 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 bank robbery is that if the vault, you got to look at where the vault is at. If the vault is across the floor, mm-hmm. when they need to 
replenish their drawers. They're not walking across the floor to get the money and mm. bring it back. So and somewhere behind them, maybe the head teller, she has a, a drawer full of stacks of money. You know, 10,000 packs of hundreds, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, 2,000 packs of 20s, you know what I mean? And they wrapped already, you know, the wrapped right. money. And they, got, they, and they have that to replenish anybody that needs money, mm-hmm. you know. What's the most you ever went home with? Uh, you don't know. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> Stop lying, you know, man. I, 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 I'm about to open another can. I'm sorry, like you. I do, I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> Stop doing that, man. You was convicted I'm, already. I'm just saying. I don't. I don't. I don't know, but you know. You ever got millions? Two hundred thousand. No, we didn't, we didn't get millions. No, we ain't never get millions. If what did you add it all up? We got, what did yeah. you do with your money? Nigga shit. <laughs> when we was younger, we was doing nigga shit. You know? Cars, jewelry, what? Yeah, yeah, not so much jewelry, but that's what I'm saying. Because in the '60s, they had no jewelry. They had jury, but they had mm-hmm. jury. You bugging? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was yeah. the biggest? What's the most memorable bank you robbed? Memorable bank that you robbed? That's what I'm saying. That's what the you most have, memorable it to be bank that, that I like robbed. When you think about bank, right? It has to come to your mind. Like well, I the most memorable banks that I robbed was the ones I said, like when I was in prison. That's the because that was that was. The oh, most you get to that. Oh, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like you know, the other shit is just because you number four in top fifteen bank robberies. So, yeah, so I, like that. All right, all right so, <laughs> so all right. When when did you when did you go to jail for shooting the police? Uh, that was seventy five. Did you get caught for the bank robbery yet? Or no, no. I did. I had served time for one for conspiracy. Like I said, we never got caught in the bank. The first, my first. Yeah, how you got locked up the first time? First bit was because somebody told told who told know? what's his name. <laughs> nah, man. Just, God, yo, come on, Uncle Jack. First, come first, on. First, first, I was, first, the first time somebody went bad, but they could only convict us for conspiracy. They, they, they couldn't. Really. Why did he tell? What made him tell? Yeah, that motherfucker didn't want to go to jail. Probably, you know, was scared they, of prison. You don't know what he, they caught. He's weak. I like. Sales. You don't know what they caught him for. That he told. Like he just went to tell. He didn't just. Go no, to no. He got. He, you know, like most times they go and do something else somewhere else, and he then get caught up. and get jammed up and give information. You know about did some go, other shit. Did you go know? to trial for the first? I went to trial. Yeah, yeah. And yeah you I'm lost trial. trial. Yeah, I'm the trial. And, yeah, how, yeah. and how, how much time they offered you? They gave you. They gave me uh, t- ten year, two five year sentences running consecutive. Actually, because it was two different bank conspiracy charges. He yeah. told them both. The nigga told them both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so after you don't know his name, you forgot. You don't want to tell us his name. Yeah, his name ain't. Is he home? Is he alive? The nigga yeah. ain't. He ain't live. You know oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. So that, that had nothing to do with. No, nah, I, I, I know. He I know, got I know, a I natural know, causes, I, man. I, 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 uh, so, so, He's natural causes. So man. I ain't dealing with that nigga. <laughs> so you did your ten years. You did the ten years. No, and you came no, out I, no, I, no, I, I went, I went in and. Uh, the serving that time, that's when the other bank robberies happened while I was incarcerated. Hmm. Yeah, during that that particular. Wait, we talking about time. The first time you got charged or incarcerated for something, right? Right. Was a ten year sentence. Yeah, for the bank and, robberies. And then that's how you fi- you found a way to go to college. Right. What co- was the name of the college? University of Michigan. University of Michigan. So you went to the you went did you, did you actually go at all? I went to the University of Michigan. All right, I said you missed you, 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 you missed a few classes, <laughs> I man. I missed a few classes. I mean, that's a, that's a whole story in itself. I could be, you know. I, yeah, we want to know all that because I'm gonna open the can up soon. Okay, okay. Listen, this is what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> what happened was right after we after we was in a few years, I was like a, I was I'm gonna say a troublemaker, but I used to. You know, uh, resent authority, as they said. <laughs> so I would have problems with police all the time, and I'd get put in the hole. You know, for insolence. You know, refusing to obey an order. You know, and shit but, like you that. Why you was incarcerated? Yeah, well, I'm in jail. Yeah, you know, if they tell me to do something, man, fuck that. I ain't doing. And they, you know, going to the hole. You know, and you. Did they ever beat you up? They rough you up a little something sometimes. You know what I mean? So anyway, we like so I'm in the hole. And so I used to go so much that, you know, uh, one of the guards used to, you know, he used to kind of like the guard that was in charge of the hole. He like, Williams, you back again? You back already? And when I leave, you'll be back, you know, that kind of shit. So he was kind of friendly. So um, 
they had an orderly that used to be out. You know what I mean? And so when I used to get uh, disciplinary segregation, like, you know, when they give me the 60 days in the hole or 60 days with nothing, you get no, you know, you don't have nothing, no property, no nothing. You just in, in the cell, you know, solitary, you know, with nothing. However, the orderly that used to work, you know, to clean up for, you know, to clean up the tears and all that, serve, help serve the foods and all that. You know, that's my man. So he used to bring me reading material so I have shit to read. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it wasn't, he couldn't really get books, you know, because I would, I would have to flush them sometimes. So he would bring these. Flush these, the books? Well, I said he couldn't bring books. Because, okay. So because if they come, I would have to have something like a newspaper that I could tear up and, you know, and then flush. You know, before, oh, you know, okay. I, you know, I, so because be you wasn't paper. allowed, you weren't, you wasn't allowed, you were allowed nothing. You know what I'm saying? But uh -huh. he would sneak stuff, so I have something to read. You know, to occupy my time, just sitting there. You know what I mean? So it would be paper stuff, mm -hmm. right? You know, newspapers or something like that. You know, he would stash on them and then drop, and then I would just tear it up and mm -hmm. flush it down the toilet after I finish. Mm -hmm. You know, so. um he used to bring me this other newsletter that he used to have for the Bureau of Prisons. Mm -hmm. It was really for the staff. Mm -hmm. You know, they would get this newsletter that would talk about everything that was going on in the whole Bureau of Prisons, you know, in every facility or where there are other jobs at, you know, mm -hmm. other positions open, you know, just talk about policy changes. And... I, I used to read, you know, just because I ain't had shit else to do. You know, I would read that shit, you know what I mean? And I, one day I'm reading that shit and I seen that they was starting a pilot program, you know, a work and study release pilot program. Mm. And they outlined, you know, all the qualifications for the individuals that would get in the program. So I'm like, hold it. Then, then they said the facilities that they were going to start it in. And the facility I was in, which was Milan, Michigan, that was one of the facilities that it was supposed to start. And I said, holy shit. And I, said, I, got it. I said, this is something sweet. So when I got out, you know, like. So what was the stipulations? I mean, you know, you just had to have a clean record, you know, no disciplinaries. Um, you had to have, uh, uh, you know, your high school diploma, your GED, your high school diploma. You had that already. No, I got that GED though. After that, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> so and you know, it's, uh, it's some you know some it was some psychological qualification because they had you know the, the psychological programs in the facility, you know that would enhance your, you know, um, your your ability to get into the program to qualify. Mm. So. I came out, you know, and in, in, in the federal prison, it's like it's really, you know, people from all over the country. So, you know, kind of, you kind of generally, uh, you know, congregate geographically, like New Yorkers be with New Yorkers, you mm -hmm. know. You know I mean, mm -hmm. you fuck with everybody else too. But, you know, you usually bond with, you know, because y'all talking about, you know, yo, what's going to happen in New York or whatever, whatever, you know. And it, and it, and it don't be too much of a borough thing. It's, it's everybody, it's just New York, you know mm, what I'm saying? Mm, mm, right. So, you know, but I always been fucking with dudes in Brooklyn, really, anyway. So I, 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 I was fucking with a couple of dudes in Brooklyn, and so I came out and said, listen, I got some good shit that that's getting ready to happen, you know, and we all need to get in this program. You know what I mean? So I told them, so we started, everybody got their shit lined up, you know, did what they had to do to, you know, fix their records up and to qualify for this program mm -hmm. when it came. And it did came, and it came, you know what I mean? And, you know, and they used to also bring in some groups from uh, the University of Michigan, the Black Student Psychological Association, which was mostly females. Okay. And uh, we would participate in all that, you know. Uh, one of my other friends, he he went and uh, became the chapter president of the NAACP in the jail. You know what I mean? So all of that shit enhances your chances of getting in the program. Okay. You know what I mean? So when it comes, we all qualify to get in it. You know what I mean? I had to do the psychological thing because I had a fucked up record. 
-hmm. So I had to go into, they had a, a little psychological unit and shit, you know. So I had to go into that to, you know, kind of, you know, that they deal with my my attitude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, um, so mm. we qualify for the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started going out. So just so happened... No, I can't say that. I can't say that. <laughs> you can't say what? No, I'm just because I'm, I'm protecting somebody. Oh, well, there was somebody. Well, there was somebody that we knew that could alter and get our our schedules right mm -hmm. at the university, right? And um, she helped us, you know, put up when we, you know, I'm just skipping some stuff. Mm -hmm. Once we got accepted in the program and got accepted to the school, mm -hmm. then we had to have a program set up. So uh, this individual, she helped us put the program together officially because she worked somewhere in there that she could do it. Right. So our schedule had it where, you know, we had two classes, you know, um, early in the morning that generally in the University of Michigan, you know, back then and even now, most of the classes are lecture class. A lot of the classes are lecture classes. So she intentionally put us in lecture classes. Mm. That, you know, it'd be an auditorium and the professor just be talking. They don't take no attendance or nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They just talk and you just got past that exam when, it, when you know, when, when, it's time. It, right. when it's time. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like they be calling so and so here, and none of that shit. You know what I mean? So we had those kind of classes going on, unknowing to the institution. When they look at our schedule, it looked like, we booked all day right. for class. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, who was banging this lady? <laughs> <laughs> somebody was, but it wasn't. Somebody us. was nailing her. How y'all got nah, her? We, no, somebody was banging her, but it wasn't wasn't none of us. None of the, none of the three of us, anyway. But somebody else. Why are you was, so secretive for? You got to protect her because she's she's still alive. I presume. Yeah, come, yeah, someone's still alive. Someone, and she's still with the company. Some, some, uh, somebody, somebody, somebody no, a doctor. Dig, dig, you know what I mean? So I, I don't want to fuck him up. You oh, know? oh, she's the doctor. No, oh, well, somebody is the doctor. Or oh, the person. So that person. that helped us in, in, in getting our setup. Oh, okay. When last time you spoke to them? I don't speak to them. I don't speak. To oh, them. you just you just principal guy. I don't. Yeah, I don't speak to him. You know, you just like, got with principles. You doesn't. You're not. Yeah, awesome. I'm yeah, not. Got it. Got it. I, I got, All yeah. right. So they had your whole class set up. So now. So um yeah. So now. So we would come out. Okay. So <laughs> the funny part was that you know they took us. What's a place used to be called Montgomery Wards, right? Mm -hmm. It's like an apartment, so like Sears. Mm -hmm. And so they would give you a, a, a little budget to, and some little money to go there and get your, your, your street outfit. Because part of the program, too, was, like I said, it was experimental. And they wanted, you know, they, nobody on campus was supposed to know you from the prison. You know, you was mm -hmm. less like a student being, in, you know, at school. You That's know, nobody mm -hmm. would know. So we would have, they, you know, we would go to the Montgomery Ward. They'd buy our little clothes. And they had these lockers and stuff in the front of the prison that we used to change into all our prison clothes, into the street clothes. And then get on the the uh, the, uh, the work release bus. I see it. I see the setup. And go to the school, and 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 and, and they would make different drops at the school. You know, some dudes was on work release. You know, working at some spots or whatever. Mm -hmm. We happened to be in the school, so they would drop us at the student union building. You know, what I mean, you know, and from there, you know, the bus, you know, the bus goes on and comes back and picks us up at a certain time. So basically, we would be out in the morning. We would start at. Six o'clock, they would they, they would let us get ready, you know, and then we would get you know by the time we get on the bus maybe and eat and all that other bullshit. We would but we weren't eating, you know. We was faking like going to the mess hall because we was eating street shit really, you know. Mm -hmm. So we do all that. By the time all that happens, we get out there like this. Really, probably change our clothes seven seven thirty ish. By the time we get dropped off, it'd be maybe. 8.30 by the time they do their rounds. 8.30 at night? In the morning. Oh, dropped off, oh, you mean dropped off to the... To the you know, we had to be back until about before 12, about 12 o'clock count. You know, so, we had to be, yeah, about 11, 11.30ish. PM. PM. So we at was night. out all day. Yeah. So now, yep. who came with the idea to go rob banks while he was in school? 
You did. I, yeah, that's just my, yeah. Just so you robbed the banks to do what with the money? I'm, that's, that's what I'm confused. You were in jail. You lived in jail. We had bad Thomas, palm. Sir. We had mad palm. Nah, we had bad apartments and shit. You know, we had, yeah, we built our little shit up, you know. Money gets you anything, man. So <laughs> during, during, during your 10 years, mm. you were robbing banks while going to no, school. No, like, no, that's, you know, like, and, and it wasn't. In the beginning, you know, it's, it, as and plus it was a time factor. You had to be within a certain amount of months of your release too, oh. before to qualify the program. And all of us had been in for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was the other thing. We wasn't like, you know, they wasn't letting the motherfucker out soon. That he just got there or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. You know now. So, so it was like you know we had you know we had to have about a year left on your joint. You know what I'm saying? So. But who, who, but who, who thinks about doing a crime while they're in jail? Well, the, the, the rationale that I, <laughs> I mean, the rationale was that, yo, we gonna rob the shit out of these banks. We gonna stash the money, right? And, and we when get we out. come out, we will yeah. never have to do anything again in life. Mm. You know, we gonna invest the money because we was trying to get a club and some, you know, some other properties while we was out there. Mm -hmm. So once we, in our minds, once we got out, that was it. Yeah, we would, you know, we was gonna finish school. We was gonna finish the four year degree. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, stay. We gonna relocate. <laughs> you know, come out, relocate, finish the school in that University of Michigan, have a degree, have investments, and we would never have to commit a crime again. Shooting the police didn't happen yet. Nah, that was later. Yeah, that's one because like we, we didn't get to that point that I'm talking about. The the point about I'm you know. I'm saying because this is an amazing story, so I'm trying. Yeah, to Yeah, so no, so like you know something in, went wrong in one of the bank. Like as as we, you know, it's it's, a, it's kind of a long story type of shit. Make, but, make, 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 tell us. Well, you know, it was a the work release driver, right? The, the work release driver, like one of the guys that one of my guys, man, he was kind of. And he was kind of fascinated with with mafia type shit or something, you know. Like that's the only way I can say. Think the work of these driver was uh, of a nationality that you know had they had a little mob shit, and his brother was in in Detroit. Mm. So the work of these driver is also a prisoner. That's with you know he's not. You know, a, a driver from the street. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He's a prisoner with, with, um, uh, you know, the the custody to to and the skills to drive the the bus. And he's also short. You know, get not. You know, he's gonna go home soon or whatever. So uh, my, you know, one day. And in, in the rush, yeah, because they did have jury. One day in our rush, cause it's like we had apartments by the time when we doing our little shit, we just got apartments. We got is this shit with the Rolex, the watch? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So by the time, sorry, I um, one day we missed the bus at the student union building, like so, you know. So we had to we had to catch the bus, but we had to go change. We was actually in Detroit, and we had to speed back. I remember that night, be speeding like a mother. I said, boy, if we get stopped, man, this shit is over. You know, we you had have, to get back. You had back. money in the, in the car? We was dressed, in, in our, like, we would go and change. Once we go to our apartments, we would change into some fly shit. We didn't wear that fucking Montgomery Ward shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We had fucking. You only had, like, one apartment. Huh, man, me? please. We had more than one apartment. You kidding? How many times did you have? Three? We had about, actually, Five at the, oh, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. top of our game, we had five okay. joints, you know. Okay. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> yo, but uh, what happened? Y'all speeding, y'all speeding. Yeah, down. yeah, I get, we get back. Yeah, we get back. So now, I don't know. What, I don't know. What the buses, the fucking buses, the bus that we missed the bus anyway. But we still had to go change. And in our haste, in our haste to change, I got on the bus with a watch. You oh. did the fucked up shit. Damn, I was on the bus with the watch. So you was feeling good. Yeah, so I pin it. So dude pins it. You know, the work with his job, he said, yo, Jazz, you know, nice jewelry. I'm like, oh shit. He said, Why yo. you just throw it outside? 
No, that's what I was going to do. But he, he offered to, to, to take it and hide it. And he had a stash on the bus or something. He could, he could hide it for me. So I went for it. You know what I mean? So I did it. So it didn't cause any problem because, you know, he get. But that opened up my man to think this motherfucker is cool like that. You know what oh. I mean? Yeah, so he started revealing certain shit to him about some, like, some of where the apartments was. Instead of being safe, he gets picked up sometimes by the apartment or dropped off by the fucking oh, apartment. God. You know what I mean? Tripping. Yeah, so he left. So then he, he, he cut into the dude and met his brother, which supposed his brother supposed to be some type tied to the mob in Detroit or whatever. So wait, let me, let me catch up because I'm, I'm kind of slow. All right, go ahead. Get a nigga to watch the whole, you don't want to say his name. I say his name because he a rat. Yeah, I say his. He's What's a white name? rat. Jeffrey Jeffrey Rockman. So you gave Jeffrey Rockman the watch. Yeah. Jeffrey. Jeffrey said he's gonna yeah, put Jeffrey, the watch. Yeah, we still looking for Jeffrey. He's the, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Je- Jeff said he gonna put the watch. Yeah. Right now, when Jeff put the watch there, you you feel good. You feel you in your mind being from Queens and being how we are. You knew not to play the nigga too close. You just, yeah, you just, I was. You know, it happened. So he offered. We did it. But you your, but your man was open. Yeah, after that, you know, then they started talking more. You know, I, I mean, still he, wasn't he, feeling dude like that, but, you know. And he told Jeffrey where the spots was. Kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Jeffrey probably was just being more nosy, but he was fucking with his brother, you know. He, and his brother, Jeffrey brother was in the mob. Yeah, it was probably mob, mob related, you know what I mean? So he would get different shit, you know, could do different shit, you know what I mean? So then, night, night, continue. Like so, Jeffrey did that fucked up shit. What yeah, happened? yeah, yeah. So no, he didn't do it fucked up nothing. Then you know, okay. so um, uh, you know things gonna smooth like basically, you know. But how somehow, long has been going on for though, Chaz? It was going on for for months, like six, seven months at that point. Going to school and robbing banks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we was get to. We had hey, a lot of time. Hey, we hey, went bitches, to, we like, went come to, on. Any, yeah, any pussy? We had, yeah, we got pussy. You think shit? I had, I had, we had one of our apartments was in the tallest building. Really, it was in Ann Arbor on the campus. We had a fucking little penthouse up there. We was getting pussy like a motherfucker up in the mm. I don't want to doubt you, man. You got a black hat on, looking crazy. Man, I don't want to doubt you. Man. You look like a small <laughs> Yo, criminal so, right now. So, <laughs> love you, love you, man. so. So then, like I said, uh, you know, as time goes on, whatever, whatever we doing, whatever, he trusting this nigga and stuff, the nigga brother. Yeah, well, he trusting the nigga brother more than anything. You know okay. what I'm saying? But this bird, you know, it's he still like, like, like he still fucking with fucking with him a little bit. He wasn't letting him know nothing about no robberies or nothing, you know. But he, I think he just revealed too much to this dude. The dude knew too much shit, you know. knew knew where the, where some of them apartments was at. So. um uh, you remember I'm saying talking about the, the the stolen car. So sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes all of us didn't go out at the same time. And then they had this other program. They had a a, a, a religious program that on Sundays you could go with the, a church family. You know, mm. like. And, you know, on a Sunday, you go to church with them, and then, you know, you, you then they take you to the house to eat, and you do all this bullshit, right? <laughs> so so the, we had our guy, one of the guys was the car thief, you know, that would steal the hot car for the robbery. Mm-hmm. So this I'm, I'm, I'm jumping to the end. This is where the shit goes crazy. Why you just jump for it, though? Because it was this mad robberies that's going on in between so the, that. So the, the middle of the we in know. Ohio, we in we all, we we can go to Ohio. we can go to Toledo in two seconds from where we was at. Okay, you got know it. we all can right. go. Yeah, but you know the shit is happening. You know they said we, they said we they, they had pinpointed us robbing banks in about the six or seven different places in different states and I was, right, you know, so whatever. Get, get to so so, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to how it went wrong. So what happened was. Uh, he went out, and it was uh, like it was finals time for finals, you know, mm-hmm. to take the test. So usually they would let us go out. Still, you know, everybody go out. This particular time, they started saying like, "Yo, y'all only can go out on the days that you're scheduled to take the finals." So that particular time, like we was coming to the end. Of, all of us was coming to the end because that next semester. We expected to be out, 
you know, and, and mm. paroled, you know, and going out. So we needed to do one more big joint, you know, a big robbery. And we had one planned in, um, you know, in, uh, what the, it was Flint, Flint, I think Flint, Michigan. So what happened was he was good. So the only day that we were out, all three of us together, was on a Monday. Every other day after that, we wasn't out together. You know what I mean? So we had to do this robbery on that Monday. So he was went out that night, that day, the Sunday. I mean, and he was supposed to get get the, the stolen car right. When he came out again that evening, that night, he told us, "Man, I ain't get the car. What the fuck you mean you ain't get the car? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like nah, I ain't get the car." And he said, "Plus, you know, I had what's you know, I ain't I didn't get the other because we had another way to get other vehicles. We had vehicles, and for some reason, but our vehicles were." like, you know, um, kind of upscale vehicles at the time. And, you know, you know, a black guy driving a certain kind of vehicle, young, would draw attention, even if he was in different vehicles. So he was supposed to get another vehicle. So he said he didn't even get the good vehicle that, that we needed that would be a downer. He said he got it from the other kid, the, bus, the work release driver. Right. And it was the Berkeley's driver's brother car that was in the mob, right? So it was Jeffrey's brother. Yeah, Jeffrey's brother. So now, um, the next day, we get out. That day, so that money we pressed. Now we ain't got no. We got. He said we gotta go. You know, we gotta do this. So we take Jeffrey's car as one of the good cars and uh, one other car. We only had two good cars this time. It was three of us, only two. So my man said, fuck that. He said, let's just drive up there um, and uh, we'll just get a car while we there. <coughs> and he first he was talking about a fucking carjacking them all. He said, we just put a motherfucker in the trunk. I said, man, we ain't doing that. This is the, this is the Monday. <laughs> yeah. Like he said, we got to go. We said, we just get Monday there. morning, right? Yeah. He said, we just put a motherfucker in the trunk and go rob the bank in the car and then oh, switch crazy. up. I said, man, we ain't doing it. We ain't. I said, let's try to, you know, let's try to see what we can do. Because back then, if you go to some of them little towns, you know, they'll jump out the car and run in the store to do something, go and get coffee, you know, and you just jump in the motherfucker and drive off, you know? So um, we go up there. So as we get to, when we get to the town, we park one of the cars in the switch up spot and we ride. So we talking. So as we ride, you know, we get to this light and this, this lady's next to us. And it looked like her key is broken. Look like we looking at a car and the key is look like it's broken in her ignition. So my other homie, the one that, he's the car thief. He's driving. He said, oh, shit. He said, yo. So we followed that car. This lady went into, so we like the bank robbery guards. They blessing the shit out of us today. Mm -hmm. We followed her into the uh, supermarket lot. She she parked, she parked the car and get out. So I say, homie, I say, yo. He said, yo, man, somebody, you know, somebody in the other car over there. I'm like, nigga, we ain't got no time for that bullshit. We gotta get this car, you know what I mean? Mm. So I said, fuck that. I said, give me them gloves. I'm gonna get it, right? So I jump in that motherfucking car, man, and <laughs> it's a fucking stick shift. Mm. I can't drive a fucking stick shift, but I'm in that motherfucker. He can drive it. He did. He's a car that he can do all that shit. I said, but I'm like, fuck it. I gotta try to. I'm gonna try to. You know, I, I've been in the stick shift kind of like before, and you know, but I, I can't really drive them. You know what I mean? But I know I can I can move this motherfucker in my mind right. anyway. And so when I try to take that shit shut off and it rolls, and when it rolls out, it hit a car. Mm. When it hit a car, now I can't stay there and be talking about no motherfucking accident. Them, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And where's your license and all this bullshit, right? And, um, you know, I'm from the penitentiary. You know what I mean? So I get out. I tell the people, I was like, yeah, I said, yo, miss. I said, yo, don't block the I said, pull over. As I tell her to pull over, I saw him getting the fuck away. 
you know, making my move, right? Walking? Yeah, walking, yeah. And, and so as I'm walking, they scoops me up. You know, they come as I make my move away, and they come scoop me up in the car. So, like, I'm telling the homie, you know, uh, man, that said, man, that was a, you know, whatever, whatever. I said, you should have did. I said, I know you ain't, get a, you ain't wait this long to get fucking nervous or scared or something. You know, we going through it or whatever, whatever. So he said, man, was somebody in the car or whatever, whatever. As we driving, as we driving up, we see a blue car, a dude get out that fucking car and go into a, a place. He said, I got this one. He jump out and go, and my other man come out the back, jump in the driver. He jump in that fucking car and go. So now we got the vehicle, right? Um, unbeknowing to us, the dude that collects the carts saw the accident and took the license plate of Jeffrey's brother's car. Mm. So we don't know this. So we, you know, we we going, you know, we but we you know we we know that we got to do this. So we get to the switch up. We gear up, put everything on, go back, bam. We 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 do the robbery, get away. Only thing that that was crazy was like we, we we drove about I don't know maybe it was about sixty miles, about sixty miles I think. They had a still had a fucking roadblock up and shit, you know. Yeah, so um, you know, but the guns and the money is in the guy that's driving by himself. You know, Jeffrey, and, bro, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, is it Jeffrey driving it? No, no, Jeffrey's not with us. This oh, is, this is, is, no, is, we just got the car. Oh, he, he don't even know. He don't oh, know. I got you, got you, got you, got you. He's oh. he's worked with these drivers. He don't even know what's happening. Your man hooked y'all up with that. Your man, your he, man. He didn't get Jeffrey yeah. Did. Instead got of it. doing what he's supposed to do, he's run out of town. He told he asked him, yo, you know, I, I might want to use your brother's got car it. tomorrow, whatever. Because remember, they got cool, so. So you know, he road. told him if the car was parked in Ypsilanti, and and he said he told him, you know, yo, yeah, you can use it. The car's in Ypsilanti, the keys in the whatever, whatever under the bat. So there was a roadblock sixty miles out. Yeah, but we got through it. That was the only thing that was strange. You know what I mean? Probably was an omen, because that never happened to us. You know, so but it was there. But oh, they, they looking for three motherfuckers in a, in a blue car. You know what I mean? We wasn't in no blue car. You know, Jeffrey Rockman's car was red. Actually, you know, so uh, we get through, we drive, and um, we get back. So now, uh, I think one, I think it, we had to be in a little earlier that day because it was like I said, the finals, and we didn't have we weren't on our regular schedule. So me and another dude had to get back. The other brother, he had a little more time. Me and the uh, the Jeffy Van Rockman groupie, uh -huh. we had to get back. You know what I'm saying? The other dude. So usually, what happens is, you know, like I said, we take the money with the band, so we take all the bands off the uh -huh. the money. You know, and and then you know the big pile. You take that. You take your mask, the gloves, everything, and you burn that shit. You take it somewhere and burn it. Mm -hmm. So we said, yo. You know, take you know, get you know, take the money, put it where you're supposed to put it in some of the other apartments, and some of the money goes in. You know, we got like we was fucking with girls, so we had girls' apartments and shit we could use too. <clears throat> so um, he was supposed to do all the cleanup, you know, because we had to get back. We had mm -hmm. to get back to the jail, you know what I mean? Early that earlier than we usually had to go, so we go back, and. Um, so he comes that night. So as after the uh, what count? I think when was it? Nine, ten o'clock count. After that count, this dude comes and we we all you know we all we we in the room we talking. The, the Jeffrey Van Rockman dude comes and said to ask homie. He said, "Yo, yo, the FBI is coming to see me tomorrow." So FBI, what are you talking about? He said, "Yo, yo, uh, my man." Name. He said, "Yo, Mike, did you, did you, did you, did you rob a bank? Did you rob a bank in that car?" He said, "Man, what are you talking about? The car's in Ypsilanti." 
I'm like, what the fuck? And this motherfucker is pink. I'm like, this motherfucker is, this is a problem. What does pink mean? Light skin or he just? She's all, it's pink, pink, red. That motherfucker's oh, okay. red. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'm like, this motherfucker, yeah. He, 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 I, I, I could tell, I said, he's, he ain't going to last long when them motherfuckers question him. I could see that. Because they took the license plate down. Right. So they went to his brother, and brother was telling him, yo, I gave that car to my brother. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, they just knew that probably that it was a rob. You know, something happened in the area, and the FBI is doing their little investigation. They didn't track that something happened, you know, because probably the police said, yeah, we just got a call about some guys, black guys or some whatever, whatever, three guys in a vehicle, whatever, you know, and they kind of trying to push it together. So they coming to see him because they got the plate number right, right. for the, the, you know, the brother. He went to see the brother in Detroit. He said, I don't have my car. They, my brother got my car. Mm. And he sends him to fucking the jail for his fucking brother. So he supposed to be in the mob. I'm like, this motherfucker. You know what I mean? So anyway, that morning, we, me and uh, the groupie get out. <laughs> we get out that, that morning, you know, to, um, so, but the crazy part was the other homie said, like, yo, you, that night, I said, yo, we gotta go. I said, we gotta go clean up. I said, we gotta move everything, you know, that we gotta do some cleaning up, you know what I mean? I said, and I said, tomorrow, and he said, I don't get out till that. I said, I know. I said, when you get out, we was running. We gonna, we was gonna go on the run at that point. You know, I said, we gonna wait for you, you know what I'm saying, till you get out. Cause remember, I said they got our times yes, yes. staggered and shit. That day he got out late. We get out in the morning, but he said, that motherfucker said, Yo, man, you know the stuff that, that I was supposed to burn? I said, yeah. He said, it's still in the middle of the floor. I said, you got to be fucking joking. Middle of the floor where? At the at one of our stairs houses. Oh, the yeah, we there. took all like the bands from the, all the money from that bank robbery and all our fucking clothes, the, the fucking masses and everything is there in, in the, that apartment. Wow. He never burnt it. You feel me? So we... um. We uh, we get we gotta go there. We took up some fucking time to get rid of that shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And the guns and all that. That's there. Um, and uh, we went to another apartment where we was waiting for him. And basically, he never got there. You know, before that, the dude Rotman brought them the FBI and the and the jail the the corrections. Wow. To the apartment? Yeah. While y'all was all in there? Yeah. Yeah. But that wasn't the the apartment where where we we went and got everything in, you know, that that was related to that robbery anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had, um, you know, safely put our money was was already kind of safely away except for that money. You know, then we, we, we got that in a safe part, a safe spot. So the only thing he forgot to tell us was that he had uh, probably four thousand two stacks of twenties from something else in his in one of his jacket suit jacket pockets in in the closet. So we never got that. He also didn't tell us that he had in that particular apartment another shotgun that was never used in a, in a robbery, but it was for protection that was under his mattress. So they found those that day. You know, they found the, the that sh- that sort of shotgun, and they found that those twenties and shit. You know, and what and, happened? And, uh, you know, it wasn't from that robbery, but they made it from that robbery, basically. You know, and, and you know, when, by the time we went to trial, that money was supposed to be part of this Michigan. This Did Michigan they robbery. go to any of the? Uh, uh, but they went but, to other, They went to a couple of places that this dude Rotman could remember the areas and where. And they, did they get any money? They didn't get the only money they really got was that that little money that he forgot to t- talk about that was in. So his that's like two grand. Four. Four grand. Yeah. All right, now, you go to trial. Back to trial. Yeah, we went to trial. 
We all went to Chinatown. But lost. what happened was, mm. no, what happened was, so they come and they get us, they, they lock us down in the jail. Then they, they moved us to three different county jails. And then they finally brought us to Kent County Jail in Grand Rapids to um, Mayweather's town. <laughs> Kent County Jail in Grand Rapids to um, wait for, you know, court proceedings and shit. In, in the interim of the court proceedings, right, you know, the Brock, because now it's, it's some time passing, really. The dude Rockman said it stops cooperating, said that three black guys came to his apartment and played like they was police and then told him that he better not testify in the bank robbery case. So he refused to cooperate. So he went home, he was home? He got he released? He went home, he got released. Yeah, that was part of what, I guess, his cooperation. Because he didn't really do anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The car, well, he didn't know, you know, so he was cooperating. He didn't know that, you know. So, uh, but he could link us to the car, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the only person that could link, link somebody to that vehicle, you know. Mm-hmm. Aside from what they thought they saw, you know, that's, they ain't really ID nobody, you know what I mean? So when he decided, when he stopped co- cooperating, something they dismissed the charges on us. Like, you know, I, I guess they had, t- they were supposed to indict us and shit. They didn't, and they dismissed the charges. We go back into the system. Now, we don't go home because they take all our good time and some more shit said, you know, you, you definitely violated study release. She was in apartments and all this bullshit. Right. So they ended up sending us to Lewisburg Penitentiary. Follow on. For the you know rest of our till the end of all our bids after okay. that, they, like I said, they took good time and all that shit. So we ended up serving you know uh, another couple of years and before we got released. Okay, we never we never got you know we didn't get charged at to that point. So um, when I shit when we got home, shit it was on again. Now you know we out. So more bank robberies. It's, it's on on and popping now. You know. So anyway, they eventually just, I got to jump. They eventually come with that, this dude, I don't know what he must have did, something Rockman or something, but he after that he agreed to go into the witness protection program. And he and he went before the grand jury, and we ended up getting indicted for the Michigan robbery. You know, we went to trial, ended up going to trial on that. So what you got arrested for, though, before that? Like, you got released? Oh, in between that, I I got they didn't get arrested. They just got picked up on the on the old bank robbery charge. Mm-hmm. I got arrested for the police shooting. Now, why you shot police? Because w- we was robbing this this uh, payroll thing. Something I, I I shouldn't have been doing probably because payroll. I was really like thirsty nigga shit. Bank robber. <laughs> but somebody said it was sweet and they had the payroll in there and it's cash and all this bullshit and. Um, you know, we uh, went in there, and the, they had a guard in there. The guard got clipped in the head because he, you know, it, it got kind of crazy and shit. Got killed? He didn't get killed though. He got he just took a graze to the head, you know. And um, then once we got out, you know, the fucking police was anti crime was in a fucking cab. You know what I mean? And got on us some kind of way, and then that shit went, you know. You shot him from a car? From the car, and then, they, they, you know, they said they said uh, from the car, they, they was get, received gunfire from the car, and then in the back of 40 projects, they said that uh, when, when, the, when the guys, they saw flashes, muzzle flashes, as the guys jumped out the car, you know. So, um... And they charge you for that? Charge us for that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Temp murder on the police. And how, yeah. and how much time you you, you, you get for that? that? Twenty five years. Okay. I got twenty five for the for the bank robbery. Twenty five for that running consecutive. So that was fifty. Then I ended up with another forty five running consecutive for that. Wait, wait, wait. Tell me, tell me, Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's wait, wait, wait. It's a lot of years. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you shot the you shot the police behind forty projects. I didn't shoot them. They said it was a shootout. Behind it, only they said only ones got hit was one of the guys with me. Okay, so I right, police got shot. Right then, no, the police didn't get shot. They, you know, they saying they said that it was a firefight back okay. there, but 
one of the guys got hit because they caught they found him in the hospital. Okay, okay, got it. His father was a reverend, and his father, oh my god, I'm taking him to the hospital, and he took him to the hospital. So now bring us to okay. So you, you went, you went, you went to you went to trial mm-hmm. for the for the shooting shooting attempt murder on the police. You got right twenty five years. Yeah. Then the oh, nigga but in between that the nigga ratted. Right, the nigga ratted. That's that's what I'm saying. This it's a it's a long story, so it's hard, you know. Saying that's why I got to jump, you know what I mean? I jump but, ship, jump ship. But see, cause I jumped over it. So what happened was, once I got convicted in Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. We got convicted, mm-hmm. and so they gave us twenty five years for the robbery. So all three of us got twenty five years. That was, I think, in December. So mm-hmm. I, I had already got arrested. They brought me from the Queen's House of Detention. Mm-hmm. You know, and they brought me in from the Queens House of Detention to go trial up there for the. You know, I was in Queens on the the attempt murder of the police. Okay, shit. got it. I'm with you. So when we get this surprise indictment, when Rotman decides to cooperate and go into the witness protection program, now they gotta take me to Michigan to stand trial. They arrest the other two guys. They arrest one. One dude turned himself in. Mm-hmm. The groupie turned himself in. So, um. We all there. He didn't do no telling. He just turned himself in. You know, to my mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't do nothing. He 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 ain't do none of that. So we all ended up going to trial, and we all blew. You know, we all got twenty five years. So and I told him, I said, I'm going back to the motherfucking jail, man. I said, I ain't staying. I'm gonna get out that motherfucker. Oh, you escaped? Uh, yeah, I escaped from the Queen's house when I got back. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard, I heard something about you, you escaping because someone had a a, a release form. No, to no, get out and then no, you, it wasn't you, a release you, you form. Took... It was, it was a guy that was, you know, like when they got crowded up there, like we was on, on max floor, maximum security floor. Like when it got crowded, they had a dorm right above us, but we could get in and get up to the dorm. We could know how to jig it that motherfucking lock and get up there in mm-hmm. the dorm if we want to. So it was a guy that like they would bring people up there that was doing like you know uh, I, f- I forgot how you but they called it like bullshit crimes like spitting on the sidewalk or some other mm-hmm. you know uh, quality of life crime you mm-hmm. know what I mean so it was a guy up there doing seven days you know for something but he kind of resembled me a little bit he had the same kind of height and all that so in my mind <laughs> I said. When you go home? <laughs> I said, you ain't going, boy. You know, but so anyway, I get his identity. You know, take I, on his I, identity. I, I, how you got it? <laughs> how you <laughs> What did you do to him? I didn't do anything. I, I got it, and just people, baby, how? some people babysit it. Paid him? You fucked him up? Paid him. He paid him. He doing seven days. He, and you got niggas up there ain't never coming home. What do you think he going to do? You ain't gonna go home one. You you will go home if you just claim wait and then claim that you know go down there after the the release time. But if you don't, you ain't going nowhere anyway, basically. So mm. you know he cooperated as far as he got. Like give me that. Give me what's your. Give me your little card. You know, and we got his information from him. That's you crazy. know, birth dates and all and you, that. And you mother's it. name, father name, all that. Yeah. And I walked up out of that motherfucker the next day, and then he went down there and said, yo, I'm supposed to get out today. They said, you are out. Oh. Gee! You know, the shit, the alarms go off and shit, you know. And they laid, you know, they held him most of the day and then let him out because he, you know, he, he ain't you, know Where you was at when you escaped? Where did you go? Well, first I just went somewhere close because I, I ain't really had nothing. 40? No, I ain't go to 40, but I went in Queens. I was in Queens at first, you know what I mean, until the, I went to Queens and then I was until I watched, I was sitting back watching myself on the six o'clock news. Then I watched myself on the eleven o'clock news. Then somebody mm. came, got me, and we and I drove up out of there. Where did you go? After that, I went south. Where, yeah. man? I went to several states, but I ended up in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, I ended up in Atlanta. Where did you relax at? How long you was on the run for? Some months. Some months. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long. You know, it wasn't that long. That's a, that's a, that's long, a long time. time. So, yeah, one, I, was, I, one day's I, I long know time. it was a long time because I was robbing banks like a mom, but you know, still, <laughs> yeah, of course. Now it's on. You know what I mean? How I'ma live? 
So I was so you know that's that's how I got the forty five years for those bank robberies. That's why that's that's why I said I, I was going to jump with the story. So I ended up getting you know another. So what happened was they ended up capturing me after another shootout. They captured me. How they capture you? What, what, somebody somebody gave up one of my one of my what's it called? I was coming up here to uh, it was a, it was a, a racetrack bank in Monticello, New York. It was a bank across the street the from the state. racetrack. Yeah, and that bank, you know, held a lot of money, and so I came up. We was gonna do, you know, that's that was our target. And what happened was when, you know, somebody got to one of the girls who had was one of the safe houses, and uh, the girl, I don't know how she get, somehow gave gave to let this motherfucker know that I come through there or some shit. You know what I mean? And this dude wasn't. He was a he was an informer, and so when I arrived there, they had they had went to that house and held it for two days, stayed in there for two days, and when I showed up, they was there, you know. So there was a shootout. I was captured, and um, you shot at them. Hmm. You shot at them. Yeah, I shot at them. They shot at me. Uh, Shit. Uh, you never you like, never got you never got hit before though, right? Yeah, I got hit. I got hit. You can see it right there. See that? Right there. It grazed? Yeah, cause, yeah. They ain't, they ain't, they can't shoot. They be scared of the motherfucker. <laughs> oh, they be so they so be when that for guns fire be going, they be scared too when the motherfucker shout back. Sometimes they even run. So 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 bring us. But they but sometimes they they do what they do. You know what I mean? But so 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 all right. So you get caught in a shootout. Yeah. You get caught. Uh huh. Yep. Chill chill, 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 chill the fuck out, or we gonna um kill you and you stop. No, what do you mean? So how they got you to stop shooting? Oh shit! I ain't had shit. I ain't having so many fucking bullets. Them motherfuckers out gunning me. What are you talking about? Shit! Yeah, okay, I just chill the fuck out. Yeah. yeah, they shot the windows out the fuck. I was still in the fucking car. Yeah, they tore that motherfucking car up. They thought I was dead though. They thought I was dead when they came over to the car, but I wasn't. You know what I mean? Seem like Superman over here. Yeah, that's what they thought. You know? So, all right, so you got 25 years for that. They kicked me, whipped me up, and shit. They beat you, know you up with that? Yeah, hell yeah, like, I was bleeding like crazy. They still was, you know, one motherfucker talking about, you remember me? I don't even know you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so you had 95 years and all. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, so I, yeah, yeah, I got convicted for the bank robberies while I was on escape. And, um, you know, guy went bad on that one. The guy, because while I was in, they was as they, what they said was I was giving out orders while I was in for guys to raise money for my defense, and so some they, they went to do the the Monticello bank robbery, and and they got caught, and a guy that one of the guys got caught there, Told. Curtis King. He ain't got the same name now because he he went on the witness protection program also. You know, Curtis King ended up cooperating after that. He got caught in that bank robbery. And he called the FBI and told him that he had information on me. And mm -hmm. they, you know what I mean? And that's what they wanted here. And they came and he cooperated. And they gave me another 45 for that running consecutive. How long you was in jail for before you go to trial? Uh, I don't know. Uh, a year or so. I think it was about a year. Probably. People respected you in jail? Yeah, people know me. Yeah, I mean, we, had, we was cool with everybody. You know? Right, get out of here. I was cool with everybody. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call them cool. Man. They yeah. respected you in jail? They respected your hand? Man, we was all right. My man, listen, I, it, it, ain't, it, it ain't like people think, man. I mean, I was just natural. I, I, some guys I know from when we was in Spotfoot, you know what I mean? I Sometimes you run into guys, you know what I mean? How did you get home? I got home because, one, uh, some of my sentences, you know, in post conviction, got thrown out because I was fighting them. Uh, some of them was run concurrently, which is, you know, I got it down. You know, I didn't get, I didn't get rid of it. You know, and, I, and it took me 15 years to do that. You know what I mean? So I was in Cosby 15 years before I made parole. I was, you know, I, you know, ended up getting 
two degrees. You know, I did all that shit, too. I got two bachelor's degrees, you know what I mean? Mm, so I ended up doing all the programming in there, Sorry. plus fighting my cases. And so some shit got thrown out. Some got run concurrently, you know. How and much then time I'm, you did in all? 15. I did 15, 15 years, and I made okay. parole. Then I was paroled. You, you know. on parole for life? No, no, hell no. I'm on What's parole this? now, shit, you know? I was on parole, you know, I did, did another, but fucking about another 10 years, eight years, I would say, on parole after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was your, uh, so we, we passed all that. What year you came home and you was good? What year? I came home in fucking 89, 1989. Mm. Where did you meet Prem at? Let's go straight. Let's go straight. I mean, Prem came in the jail, man. I know Prem. You know, don't, 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 don't start. Don't start getting on antsy on me now. <laughs> don't start getting on antsy. You, you know, you Prem came in the jail plus member. But where did I'm you come meet Prem? You met him in jail or home? Nah, I met him at home. I mean, remember, I'm in Queens all the time. I ain't, I ain't in jail all my life. I'm in Queens. I'm from Queens. So when did you meet him though? Did you meet him? Were you, were you, did you meet him in the streets? Because he was younger than you. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, oh, you yeah. met him when he was, when he was preem and he came up. Like, Yo, I no, know. I don't know if he's a preem. I don't know if he's a 5% of what then. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, no, I, you know. How many gangsters did you know before that? You get there? How man, many I know I know a lot of people, man. How many? Stop, come on, your Chaz. I can't count them. I'm telling you, Chaz, man. I know people all the, over the country, we, we man. We talking about the known gangsters in New York. We talking about like the fat cats. We talking about like the, I did, I did, like cat. I don't, I don't really know cat like that. I oh, you don't know, know cat. Mm -mm. So you knew, know you knew you knew Supreme. Supreme, yeah, yeah. Cat, right. I didn't really know. Cauley, you know, and uh, I didn't know cat though. Okay, you knew Pappy and them Pappy. niggas. In, no, okay, cat. okay. Mm -mm. So you know I was gonna ask next. You see that? Yeah. No, but you know I know you know I know a lot of dudes that was fucking with Pap. You know. But oh, I, you know. Okay. Yeah. I so now, so so you met Prem. You just met him. Yeah. No, cool. I didn't just meet him. I think I said I know. I mean, Prem did a federal bid while I was in there. He did a fed bid too. Describe Prem though. What do you mean? Personally, what type of person is he? He's a good man. He's a <laughs> thorough man. He's a good man. St and you, 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 you stand up. Stand you, you, up all the way. That's how you always felt about him. Yeah, yeah. Prem is good. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I, you know, I fuck with these guys, man. And just, that's why you was put in the position. And that's what. Take me a sip of this. Da, 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 da. Take me a sip of that. Yeah, that's my. You a real nigga? I'm just saying. I don't know why you would hold the juice. You know, this is this the time where the juice get 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 a little bit. You know, the red bulls in your system. So hopefully, it gives you wings. No man. <laughs> um, so. Uh, um, um, so so talking about so, but you know a lot of guys in Queens. Yeah. How did you just start in the music industry then? Okay, uh, when I uh, came home, I was on uh, on a special type of supervision because of. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> what they call intensive supervision because of the crimes that I was convicted of. Mm. You know, so when you when you came, I'm sorry, hold that though. When you came mm. home, did you have any money left? No, I didn't have no money left. Damn, you're lying, but get. <laughs> I just saw you like you just lied to me. Now, remember, <laughs> now, 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 now I'm not keeping my. Now you lied to me in front of my face. <laughs> no, well, I ain't had no money left. I came home, you know, broke. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't broke. Okay, got it. I, I. But so I got it. so you was on intensive supervision. Yeah, so I was on intensive supervision. So, you know, like when you like you got these they give you these special POs and shit. Mm -hmm. And it's like a it's really like a catch twenty two. It's like you know, they it's not their job ain't really to keep you out. Their job is to get you back in as quick as possible. Mm. You know what I mean? Because of your record, really. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want you in the street, you know. So um Part of your 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 parole, you know, um, stipulations is to get stay out, just to get a job, right? You know, so what they would do is, you know, tell you or you when you cut, they keep you on a weekly report and shit, like you know, to to, to you get a job or whatever, right? So every week you gotta tell them that you're looking for a job, and you know, the catch twenty two is, you know, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I went out today, you know, I went out all week or whatever. And then they say, oh, yeah, where you go? You know, where did you apply to? You know what I'm saying? You know, and you tell them, right? And so 
what they would do is go to those places to verify, suppose, that you did go look for the job. And when they go in there, they might come in there with their flak jackets on, with their fucking badges showing, and all this stupid shit, and ask for you. So you wouldn't get the job no motherfucking way. You know what I mean? So that was their method of trying to get you back in. You know what I'm saying? That you ain't working, you know, or hopefully you do some crazy shit or something anyway. But so I had to figure out a way to 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 uh, stay stay out you know, and, and make money and, qual- you know, make it qualify as a employment, legitimate employment. So one day I was, um, my son, one of my sons, he was fucking with Naughty by Nature, actually. He was like a roadie for Naughty by Nature, you mm-hmm. know. So um, one day he was in the crib and I, and he they was getting ready to go on tour again or some shit. And I saw, I looked at the itinerary. And in that itinerary, I saw like the, they was going to like major cities, and 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 most of them cities, I knew people in because of my incarceration. Like I said, I was incarcerated fifty years, and in federal prisons, you incarcerate with people from all over the country, and usually, you know, you make friends with people, and you always change numbers or whatever when you get out. When they get us, let's hook up or whatever, you know, for whatever reason. And so I said, damn, I know people in damn near all these cities and shit. So I started calling them and asking them, like, you know, what what kind of, uh, you know, venues they got out there, you know, that if I wanted to do an after party, you know, how, you know, so I, I'm calling people in different cities that I know that helped me, you know, contact clubs and all this other shit, the security that I needed or whatever, you know, for the to do an after party. So I go to Naughty by Nature and I hook up with Pookie, mm-hmm. um, KG's brother. And I said, like, yo, I got to let's, let's, let's hook up and do, I said, I got people and all this, let's do the after parties together. You know what I mean? So um, we did the after parties for the tour. That's That was my start. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I, I had a legitimate source of income, and I started doing promotions. You know, in the in the city, and then I started, you know, doing you know uh, different club shows in the city. I brought Snoop here for the first time he was ever here. Uh, Tupac, wow. Ice Cube, Luke, Uncle Luke. <laughs> yeah, so I brought, that was you was behind all that. Yeah, yeah, in Queens. Yeah, hmm. yeah, 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 for sure. That's fine. You got a question? Yeah. No, 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 no. So, how you feel about what Funkmaster Flex said about the Tupac and Biggie situation? Funkmaster Flex. Uh, Funkmaster. I, I, don't start yet. Don't start, don't start I don't. Yet. I mean, no. I'm saying... I, all that emotional shit, man. I, I mean, like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, I don't even understand what he was fucking talking about. You know what I mean? That that what he what he what did he claim? He I, I thought I read something about he claimed. I tried to listen to that shit, and I thought I heard him rant, ranting about Biggie would be alive. One, oh, come on, man. He said that, that Tupac knew who shot him in quad. That's what he said. Man, I don't know about all that shit. To mm-hmm. be honest, man, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Tupac, you know, Tupac flipped on everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, I heard, really, yeah. you know, including me. Like, you know, I and we met with Tupac because, like I said, my my cousin is his stepfather, Matulu. He Matulu sent a word, yo, I need you to meet with my my son. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? So we ended up, Tupac came to Queens, you know what I mean? And well, Tupac Stretch. Walker. Stretch Walker, I, 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 know, yeah. I know his daughter, actually. Yeah, when they, we met in the house in St. Albans. Me, him, Preem, and some more other dudes I will not really mention right now, but, you know, street hey, dudes, a bunch of street dudes. And why you can't there. mention them? 
does. I mean, you know, Preem, Preem, they, it's already known that Preem was at the meeting, you know what I mean? But they, but I can't, I, I'm not going to violate their privacy, you know. Not that nothing's wrong with the I'm meeting. Sad. Yeah, I don't trust you sometimes. Yeah, but, you know, it was a meeting about the thug, thug life both, shit, both you man. know what I'm saying? So. He's a loyal guy, man. Yeah, the thug life shit. So he won because uh, the thug <laughs> life was real. Some cause somehow, part, you know, uh, Matulu was part of that thug life shit too, some kind so of way. We met him with Pac in Queens. Yeah, we met in Queens. Yeah. So like I said, even that. So after even that, he he act like he didn't want to talk to me. When I, I saw him in Vegas after that, and he acting all fucking paranoid and shit. What? After he got out of jail, after he got out, you know, after the shooting and all of that, you know what I mean? So. What was the conversation based off in the house? About the thug, you know, the thug life, you know, bringing the code to the streets and all that, you know, that what he wanted to do, you know, oh, okay. what, he, what he him wanted, and Matulu wanted to do. He wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, basically he wanted to say, like he wanted, to, you know, the OGs to support, you know, you know, what the, bringing the code and to the streets. And who was on board, all of y'all? Yeah, we was, we was good with it. But then he got hit up? Yeah, and then he got hit up and the shit went, Hey, why? You know, just dead, you know, got dead, you know, and he started his West Coast shit, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, I ain't no rat, so I don't, you know, but, <laughs> you know. No, you know, my, my thing is. Oh, you like, stopped me from talking. Okay, my thing. <laughs> okay good, good job, good job. I just wanted to say something. My thing is that I think the turning point of all that bullshit. Me, just my, my personal opinion, is when Suge was at, what was that? Was it Madison Square Garden? I think we was all in Madison Square Garden, and he got on the stage and said something about Puff. And and Puff didn't, Puff could have easily incited some shit right then, which he should have, then probably Biggie wouldn't have been there. He should have responded differently than he did. Well, I heard from some that I'm just saying. All I heard from some OGs is that whatever was going on with it was above Biggie's pay grade. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm not I'm not even tripping on that. I'm mm. just saying We're that. We're talking about though. You know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm saying school. that if if if, you know what if, I'm talking if, about, if Puff would have like, probably responded differently in Madison Square Garden, which would have caused a lot of trouble, but. You know, but it would have been trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like for 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 everybody that was in the in the guard and making ugly statements, because all of New York was in that motherfucker, and it was easy to incite. You know, it's mad street niggas in there that would have rose up for for Puff. You know what I mean? I think that that would have turned around this whole fucking so Pac, beef so, shit. So man. Pac turned on which you, had nothing to do with Pac X and Biggie. Pac X at the time. Pac act funny to you in Vegas. Yeah, I guess he was paranoid about everything, you know. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know what the fuck was on his mind. And that was the last time you seen him. Last time, no, I saw I, that night. Uh, I seen I was in I was in Vegas when he got hit. So that that night, I um, when he got killed. Yeah, I saw him. Run, I saw them running. Him and Suge was moving. Came past the Betty Boot Bar. They was getting the body. What you were doing out there? I had a uh, I had a I had a promoter's license in Vegas and uh, for Nevada, you know, and a, and a license to collect admission fees. I used to do all the after parties for uh, oh, you I mean, had. a lot of. Oh, so that means it was confiscated. No, I just stopped doing it. You I know, just I, wanted to make sure. I just want to make sure. No, it wasn't confiscated. I had a, a, a license, a promoter's license, and I had a license to collect admission fees in Vegas, in Nevada, and so I would do the after party for the Mike Tyson fight. So you were cool with uh with with, with, uh, with Premium? Yeah. Uh, he's cool with Jaru. He's cool, cool with Jaru. I heard you was a famous peacemaker. <laughs> Man, I ain't talking about that. Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm not talking I heard about you was a peacemaker. Reach it. Nah, man. Um, tell me something. Uh, come on, man. Nah, man. Flip the script, man. Nah, man. <laughs> come on, man. That's that's old news, man. Uh, I heard y'all got sued. <laughs> do you, do you do, are you still cool with y'all? I don't see. I went I went to visit y'all while he was in prison. Oh, you went to visit him? Yeah. Yep, I went to visit him because job when he was out, um, I had I used to, like I used to always do also do prison outreach. That, you know they started and that was crazy though. They started letting me back in the prisons to come 
and you know bring shows and to talk to the prisoners and show them that you know there's life after prison. I'm about to get at you on. I went to I went to I went to the federal prison and so I would bring in you know artists. So Ja he came in you know volunteered for me to, like basically no charge or nothing and came into the, uh, the the maximum security prison in Coleman, Florida. So. You know, I so when he was locked up, like I do anywhere, I go visit. I still visit a lot, a lot of guys that's in. You know, but they had let me. They had saw let me come in there and come come through uh, a lot of the New York State jails and shit. You know. So we ain't going. We ain't going to address none of that. You, you shut me down. We ain't going to address. Nah, then I visit him we, while we, he we, was we, in we, because we. he did what he did for the brothers in Coleman Federal Prison. So you said we not addressing those two people, but what about uh, about Foxy Brown? Oh God, that's the third one I don't want him. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I figured on, that. Man. I figured nah, that. Nah, 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 he, said, nah, 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 nah. he said two. So I okay, figured I had, I, had, I, had, I had one in the chamber. Man, I forgot oh, all about to add that. Oh, wait, I had one in the chamber. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. You gotta stop this shit. Oh man, you are the OG. You're not talking crazy about Foxy nobody. Foxy was like a daughter to me, so that's how I felt about it. You know what I mean? And what happened with Foxy? Nah, she went to jail. Why you stop? Why they stop fucking with you, man? Come on, stop. No, nah, she went to. She got locked up. And what happened? What she was mad at you about? She was mad at me. She she was mad. She was mad. Her album got released, but that was a deal she made. I don't. I, you know, I couldn't stop that. You released the album. I didn't release it. The com record company released it. She 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 agreed to that. You know. So what's her claim to being mad at you? This guy's. This guy's. I think I don't know. She. I don't know that she's uh, mad at me. She mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to I visit Foxy Brown. Listen, listen, I used to visit Foxy Brown the whole, whole time. We kind of was. I kind of stopped managing her just before she went in. You know what I mean? Mm. And um, I kind of like told her uh, that I, you know I was moving on. She was still out, but she had a court date. So when she went to court the day after, I, I had told her that. I think it was. I didn't know it. She got they they kept her. You know what I mean? Gave her a year, so I didn't want to leave her in jail like that. That you know what I'm saying? So I would go visit her, you know, and I visit her her whole incarceration. Like I think in the when she was in the pre-trial, I did it twice a week. When she got to the sentence, it was once a week or something. I went through there. You know what's unfair though? But I, you know, I so I went through the whole thing, not not, me. Don't not, come. Don't come. not Don't come. knowing that I wasn't gonna be with her when she got out Yo, unk, as you, a manager. Unk, do you know what's unfair? Huh? It's unfair that you go to these other the, the great white hopes and, they, and you give don't them even do and you that, give them. Man. Dudes, I, I get, wasn't even going there. I told you that, man. You went there and you spoke to them about it. I watched no, the interview. No, I spoke to them because I told you why. But you, know? you still you still spoke to them. About and I told them it was limitations on you. Know, Wait, wait, plug in your artist real quick. You have an artist. Oh yeah, yes. I got. A, uh, I'm dealing with new artists. Uh, and because, and because, and uh -huh. because you gave us that, I, I still want Her more. Video juice. just dropped today on uh, BT Jams actually. Because you gave us some juice. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna show your artists some love, but you know, we don't interview artists. But off the strip for you, you can say that I can see why people, you know, did things off the strip for you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, I can see why. But yeah, what's her name? Money the mogul. Money the mogul. Mogul, Monty the Mogul. A video Monty was on BT, uh, the beat on BT Jams today. Shout out to Monty. Uh, the video Charlie. Okay. Directed by Itchy House. Oh, Itchy House from New Jersey. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. Yeah. Nice, nice, well, nice. Mm -hmm. What? What's your? What's your? What's your, <coughs> what's your Instagram? Because I wrote your Instagram. You read my shit. That was disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> that was disrespectful. Left, <laughs> left you on red, huh? <laughs> what's your Instagram? Uh, black hand Chaz. Black hand Chaz, <coughs> and we ain't gonna talk about the nigga with the with the math that. Oh, and my you can God. when you use the math, you can start with a G and yeah, you got. It. We ain't gonna talk about that. We respect that. G money, sign us out. Yo, subscribe, rate, comment, all of that, man. Shout out to Chaz, Queens legend. Two dollar Tuesday tonight. Two dollar Tuesday tonight. Pull up, man. Free before twelve. At the Dark Lounge, two two four zero one Merrick Boulevard. All right, Team G money to the road. Actually, girl. The runway, all that we here. Put the script. A round of applause for Space Ghost. One time. You know what I'm saying? We're putting in the work. He look he, he definitely he definitely looked crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he got his ass all out. Like the nasty shout out Space. to Space Ghost. Shout out to DJ G. <coughs> Excuse me. You good? <coughs> I gotta shut you know, shut you. <laughs>
<laughs> Damn. Shout out to DJ G Money. I'm proud of you, G Money. You're doing better. You know what I'm saying? You're doing real better and talking. And um, God bless you. Wow, thanks. That's and, Yeah, shout out to you. And, you know, I, I encourage you to talk up more and, and, and speak it because I do take a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> star, yeah, oh, yeah, shout star, star. Yeah, yeah, star, star yeah. talking about you. I star hate gave it. me the shout I, to star. I, I, I hate it on you. I asked him why you keep talking about G Money. Yeah, I heard, I heard you. But you like that nigga so much. <laughs> you know what I'm like saying? Because he always talking about G Money. My nigga G Money. Like, I don't understand why they keep talking about you. So. I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked. My nigga G Money. Yeah, I just fine. You know, you know, I messed. I messed all like one time, like one, maybe once or twice. You know. Time. You know. Definitely. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold I'm on. just, you know, I be chilling, man. Wait, I just gotta, I just gotta, just gotta shout the, shout the big homie Star and Buck Wild. You know the mentor, not, but not Buck Wild, but Star. But you know, you yeah. know. Talk it crazy. <laughs> Got it. Shout out to Star. Yeah, shout out to Star. All about. Let me, you, Appreciate are, 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 are you for the sound? I'm mean, going shout out to Space Ghost again. Nah, yeah, once yeah, again. I'm good. I'm good. Shout out to Star, You know, the, star, the, the tournament so. is coming mm-hmm. together. Um, The game, retro game tournament. And I'll jump in there when you when y'all get 2K. Uncle Chaz. Like, Chaz. Do 2K, John. You know, Chaz, I appreciate you. No doubt, I'm, man. I'm going to do business after this. You know what I mean? Because you look like you get a lot of money still. Um, <laughs> Lock your doors. <laughs> Wait, it's Queens from URLTV.TV. Lock your doors. Close your windows. Look through the peephole, and if you see a nigga trespassing your property, get your shotgun, and don't be afraid to blow his head off. I'm from Queens for a reason, nigga. Free web.